some spells. Uh, no BKB on Shadowfiend, obviously. There's the first stun. All right. Complexity, happy to have Swindle take a little bit of this damage to get things started. At the very least, they'll have a regen rune coming up here in about 60 seconds. There's the glyph from Cloud9. Complexity well. will get a free tower out of it. Swindle the one to grab the last hit there. There's Big Aldi. Daddy goes in. Nether Strike onto Swindle Melons as well as the Viper Strike. Call down, but he gets off the Requiem. Moon goes jumping in deep. Big Daddy brought down, but a great Sonic Wave from Bone 7. Squishes oh, up man. Complexity. There's just no follow-up damage. Ziz diving deep here with the BKB on, and they've got no way to stop him. As soon as Envy gets caught by the Scotty, he's going to be down for the count. Buyback now from the Viper. Maybe Fada can start to clean house. Lena's died. Moon Mander getting low. They'll Glimmer great Cape glimmer. him. And it's just enough, but the Impale right. is there to finish him off. It looks like Complexity did just commit a little too deep here. Aegis will be utilized by Swindle, but... So that was so they're good by, by C9. They defended that so perfectly there. Like, they, they forced the overdive. Viper didn't waste his BKB oh. until he bought back. And... Buy back from Wisp. He relocates Ziz in. They may try to do something with Swindle. At the very least, he'll survive the second uh, life after the Aegis. All right. Okay. Um, I guess that was all right. Yeah, I think that was okay for Complexity. Not good, though, I don't think. The gold graph is... Yeah, it looks like it's going to dip down a little bit. It was just a Viper buyback, right? Yep, just one buyback like, on each side, Wisp and Viper. That's the problem. It's it's so early in the game, and there's so few levels and so many heroes that the, their respawn times are really not very big, so... They they had to over, they didn't have to overdive there, but they went for all those kills and then being positioned behind the tier two, you're taking all these tier four tower hits. Those are actually very serious damage. They do more per hit probably than an average carry does at this point, because Jaro doesn't have that much farm. Like it, if you go that far, your HP is going to get low and you can't heal everybody, especially because they used the mech a little poorly. It was like as they're initiating and he was missing like 300 HP. I think that was a big mistake and maybe the only mistake Complexity made in that mm -hmm. dive. Yeah. A little overzealous, but uh, frankly, they're far enough ahead that they can afford to make those hyper-aggressive plays, as yeah. long as they don't do too many more. Uh, Ziz in particular, BKB, oh, they'll get a kill on Spirit Breaker up top. The BKB bought him a, a lot of time, but unfortunately, it doesn't mitigate much damage for those Tier 4s like you were talking about, so he did end up going down pretty quickly. He did now uh, complete the Assault Karas, Misery in the mid lane gets initiated on, Moon sets it up with the Stampede, an easy follow-up for Fly, Laguna Blade still ready to rock and roll. Now a Blink Dagger secured from his Inverse. And this is a great time to just go for the racks because there's two dead heroes. It's only a line and a spirit breaker, but you know it's better than nothing. So they push out the top lane. A little bit of backdoor uh, creep cutting from Bone Seven will stop the top wave and hopefully prevent backdoor at some point. But Sunomons is just hitting the racks right now, and yeah, really no threat to him. Uh, no glyph here. There is a buyback available on the line. He also has finger, so maybe forced into using it. Seems or, uh, Cloud9 will just let this mid lane of barracks fall and mount a defense in the side lanes of complexity. He does opt to stick around. Though for now, they will retreat as five. Do they have a smoke for perhaps a, a fake back here? Nope, doesn't look like it. So they will just retreat. And, and they spotted that Observer Ward going down, so they know that Complexity is still there. Yeah, there's so. actually already a Sentry Ward down. Yeah. So <laughs> Good stuff for the dive side. Stroke of luck there. At the same thing, uh, it'll give Complexity some vision on see how, where C9 is positioned, so they know they've got plenty of time to sit back and farm if needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what they're doing items next. Uh, Sven has his AC, probably Daedalus next. Maybe a heart. I think a heart would be okay here. Just because if you're going for a all-in end the game, not that they're not committed in the late game as well, but it's just good to build HP, basically, because it lowers your chance of dying. And then the Wisp may not need to spend his heals on the Sven instead if he goes for a heart rather than a damage item. And then he can use that to keep Shadow Fiend alive or some other hero instead. So, I th oh, he goes Blink. Okay, I really like that too. Mm -hmm. uh, gives him much better initiation. He can catch the Co-op or the Lion first rather than being at uh, a vulnerability to them reacting to him. Yeah, I was thinking, well, you've got a Blink Dagger on Fly, a Glimmer Cape on the Wisp, as well as the Blink on Centaur. There's already plenty of initiation, but that is one of Sven's biggest weaknesses, is that just getting into the fight and getting off those auto attacks. So now they have that huge burst potential. If someone gets caught at... Out of position by either the Yules or Hoofstomp from Moon Meander. There is a lot of follow-up with now three Blink Daggers on this Radiant team. Looks like Swindle will be going for the Butterfly next on Shadow Fiend, so even more mobility there. And an item that C9 just have no answer for whatsoever. MKB uh, not on the horizon for Ooh, any of these they, wars. They smoked under the ward for sure. The Observer Ward oh. completely caught them. That's why this ward was so good, because they still had a Tier 1 mid-up. And nobody usually wards that deep that early. They'll usually put it a little bit close to the Tier 1. Yeah. Can they catch somebody top on 7? Has a TP. He's going to get spotted. They see him. Oh, they There's do catch stun. him. Stormbolt started. Ziz actually uses his BKB here. Unnecessary as Fly just chunks okay. him with the Laguna Blade. But a kill's a kill. That is your 9-second BKB. It'll be on cooldown for over a minute now. Might have been a mistake there. Uh, maybe he meant to press Mask of Menace instead, because... 
Yeah. When you play Sven and you initiate, you stun, and then you have to press Warcry, God's Strength, Mask of Madness, and sometimes you just spam all those buttons when you get yeah. him down to memory, and he might have pressed the BKB accidentally. And honestly, it's it's it's, it's a definitely deal. a mistake there, but you never really know if the full team is there. And if he initiates, and then he gets turned around initiated on by by a line, right. he can't react to that. So it's just a safe play, honestly. Yeah. And it's it's not something we really should criticize at all, because it guarantees the co-op is dead. And they're ahead, so any further kills they get are just more advantage for them. Yeah, and now a small stroke of luck for Complexity. It's a very quick Roche respawn. They walk right into the pit, and uh, with the Queen of Pain dead, C9 not in a position to contest. Even if the co-op was up, probably not something they could contest too easily. But uh, it will be another Aegis of the Immortal going the way of Swivel Melons. So very good for him. He's almost got his butterfly finish. And at that point, there is almost no way that C9 can kill him. Because even Viper's basic attacks are going to be missing. His armor is going to be really high. Lower chance that Spirit Breaker can even hit him, let alone get the bashes after those confirmed hits. So Swindle Melons is in a great position, completely caught up this game. And Complexity has been playing this game pretty much perfectly yeah, in my opinion. So much armor for Complexity. They now have a Vlad's on the Wisp, you've got the AC on the Sven, and then oh Warcry, which we've mentioned a couple times. But all of that stacked up, this this gyro just does nothing. I mean, even yeah. the Viper as well, outside of Viper Strike and his poison attack, those those right clicks are really not hurting too much. I feel like if you got a Divine Rapier, it wouldn't even look like he does good damage. Yeah. Like that's that's the position they're at. Thirty damage or three hundred damage or three twenty damage is gonna be reduced to like a hundred. Mm -hmm. That's all it's going to do. And when these heroes have 1,500 HP on their supports, like, how do you stop that? It's so tough. Yeah, They're in a really bad position, and they have to go for the kills. And Viper got so much advantage in the mid lane, but if he gets behind, the hero just can't catch up nearly as fast. Yeah, they've really itemized effectively here. Now Sven moving into that data list, as you were talking about. Crystalis will come out first, actually has enough gold to get it completed, and it'll be the replacement of the magic wand. Goodbye, wand. So plenty of progression still to be had here for Complexity. Even Moonmeander, he's working on a BKB and has it completed. Mithril Hammer and the Recipe coming out on the Courier. Looking at the side of Cloud9, they've got a few BKBs of their own. Both Fada and Envy have picked up Magic Immunity. Envy's still sitting on his 10-second BKB. Sure, it'll help him survive, but the bigger problem is damage. How are they killing these heroes on the side of Complexity? And I guess the answer is, well, they need the help of these towers. That's how it happened last time, and this will be a difficult hold for Cloud9. There is 52 armor on Shadowfiend when Warcry is used. That is incredible. And the Vlads isn't even there. Another 5, and some really much-needed lifesteal as well in Swindle Melon. So, tons of armor, lifesteal. They've got everything going for them. The only thing they're missing maybe is a medallion. 76% physical damage reduction. That is just insane. Big Daddy goes in. He uses another strike, and it just tickles. Now Ziz pops in. Oh, BKB on. Fata just gets blown up indeed. He mechs, but it's just not enough. Lion goes down to boot. It's a quick 2 for nil, as now the buyback from the Viper is used. It's looking like it won't make much of a difference, though, as the structures are getting cleaned up. Envy oh, walks man. in, tries to walk out, but the BKB just isn't enough. Cloud9 forced to tap out, and not a moment too soon. 30-15, to 15, complexity roll over Cloud9. What a gold advantage there. 70k versus 45. They had, You can see it in that last fight. Gyro pops BKB, he walks in. SS starts attacking him, he's like, alright, I'm dead. And he just keeps running, doesn't make it at all, because he was doing a good one-fifth of his HP. They had the BKBs, they had obscene armor. What a cool draft from Complexity, and they played it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Lots of rotations, Fly got farmed, Fly played a support slash carry role. They shut down the Gyrocopter, they guaranteed the Shadowfiend farm by killing Viper, and even Queen of Pain wasn't able to do that much. He had to go for the fast Yules to keep himself defensive against the stuns, and... They just didn't get enough done early game. Yeah, the aggro try from Complexity was a really smart call. The Wisp, Lena, Sven really shut down Envy effectively. They didn't kill him all that much in the lane, but they just kept him in such a defensive posture that he fell further yep. and further behind, and that opened up space for Fly to just move around the map and pick on those other heroes. Uh, That's great. It. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was say, great play from Swindle as well, just to keep his composure after yeah. that really slow start, getting picked on hard in the lane, losing to the Viper that hard, and coming back and you know very early on taking over that CS chart and really making a good recovery. And that's exactly what Wisp does. I said it before, but it, in a lot of ways, he's a better hero than Dazzle. Like, yeah, Dazzle can save somebody if they're about to die, but if Wisp is healing them and giving them 20% damage reduction from the moment they start taking damage, then... You know, in a lot of ways, he's better, and he has that offensive potential. That's why C9 played so weird and why they didn't attempt very much, because they were always fearing the relocate. I mean, the last gank attempt they had was when they tried to kill Shadowfiend bottom, and they got two-man wiped for nothing. Mm -hmm. So, so hard for C9 to win that game once they got behind, and Complexity play that pretty much strategically perfectly, and they take the win. So, at right. least one point guaranteed going to them. 
in yeah. the standings. So that puts them up to at least eight. So they're going to, at, at best, tie... They're All right, we're sorry. Shape. Tie with MVP Phoenix from here. And they've got yep. a whole three more games to play. If they win any of those, they're guaranteed top four. So Complexity has got to be happy considering oh, yeah. they came out of the qualifiers, they won their spot, and they are performing better than almost any other qualifier team. Yeah, this is the dream start for them here on day four of the group stage. So stick around, folks. Game two of Complexity versus Cloud9 coming up next. I'm Zayori. He's Purge. We'll be right back.